this particular song, the very first, it's the red and the black on the right, red and black on the left here. And I'm going to hit the P button for pause. Right? So at any time, if they're confused, oh, they're flushed, oh, it's coming, I don't know what to do. Boom, P, pause. No worries. And this is how I would explain to virtually anyone who's doing this. Look, you have a color-coded keyboard, color-coded keyboard, okay? You have a red line with a red object going up to the, to the red key, right? You have a black line going right after it, and that's these two keys right here. And so you put their keys, their index finger and their middle finger, right there. And then you show them the same thing with the left hand, okay? Or you can take the left hand. I mean, if they're intimidated, it's very easy. So at this point, I'm ready to go. I've explained them, here's the game, right? Here's the one you hit. Now, when do you hit it? Between when this red fish gets to this green line on the bottom of the keyboard, then it's a game. And it has all the way up to the red line to hit it. But the ideal time is between the green and the yellow, right? Now, this, by the way, can be varied as kids get really better uh, and you want to get them very precise. You can lower that with the up and down arrow keys. But we, we start all the way open because, again, we want success. Success, 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 and that's what breeds it. So right in between here is the ideal point. You have them have their fingers ready. Now down here in the lower left-hand corner is the tempo. This is how fast it's going, and each song is going to have its own tempo. It might, one might be eighth notes, quarter notes, whole notes. They're not really equivalent from song to song. They're relative within that particular song. So this will start out at its default tempo, the, the, the tempo that's the target. But if it's too fast, all I do is hit that left arrow key on my uh, computer keyboard, and I'm way down a third or, or half. I can go down to one, look at this, I can go down to one beat per minute, right? I mean, you can't even hardly see the things moving, right? And I can just hold it down, and it'll speed it up, right? Until I find the right speed for them, right? Now, the truth is that with the kids, once they see you doing this, they're going to be speeding it up a lot. They, oh, I'm bored. I, I want it faster. I want it faster. You're thinking, oh, this is good to slow down. Kids are high stimulus, in, in particular, in these video games. Now, let me turn up the volume here so we can hear this. And again, pause. Color-coded keyboard, color-coded keyboard. Red line, red fish going up to the red key when when it crosses this green line right here. I'm going to unpause it and start playing. And this is level one. Okay, very simple. And virtually anyone can do this. Left hand. So Don and Delena will say, you know, touch their shoulder. Say, okay, right hand. And then left hand, right? You touch their shoulder. And you say, okay, red one's coming, okay. Red one the right hand. And again, you can simplify this even further, just having only one of these hands playing at once. Now, I'm gonna go back and show you a couple variations on this. I can actually put in things like the names of the notes. I can put in which finger goes where. I'm not gonna do that right now. I'm just gonna give you the overview, because we color is so primary. This is where everyone succeeds. They, they, they get their colors. So we go back to that song and I'm going to start level one, then I'm going to jump to level two. And here we go. Again, if they're having problems, left arrow key slows it down until they can do this, right? When it touches the tiptoe of the of their the game object touches that yellow line, that's the ideal time. That's when the accompaniment is playing. All right, that's basically level one. I'm going to jump and go to level two. Now what we've done is we've turned the keyboard this way, and this is how you explain to them. Say our, all we're doing is doing this, right? And so your right hand is the high notes, your left hand is the low notes. That's all you do. You turn it, level two, we just do this. It's the same exact game, it's just this way. Now, we thought this would be the toughest challenge, and in fact the kids just tilted their heads, they got it instantly. What they understand now is that music is a grid of pitch and time. And they see how the piano relates to that grid and how musical notation orientates pitch vertically. And this is all subconscious. You're not explaining this. There's no theory about this. They just 
tilt their heads and they get this whole relationship of the piano and pitch. All right? it's, it's, it, it worked much better than we actually thought it would. Um, you'll see. So now, left hand is low, right hand is high. Right? And again, all I've done is basically do this, right? See the keyboard? And that relationship is very intuitive to the kids. Now, why did we do this? Are we evil? Are we just torturing people? Trying to do a, a brain puzzler? Absolutely not. We have the secret agenda. This is this is the you know, why you, you've gotten this game, because our secret agenda is to actually condition them to play music the way we speak first, and then to read music the way we read words we already know when we get to school. Then you study the grammar. That natural language acquisition we replicate in the game. We've given them a simple color-coded way to learn to play even very complex pieces of music, and then we track them to the color-coded notation. So now, these weird game objects that they see are just these weird looking balloons and we're conditioning them to hit the right notes at the right time. That's level three, okay? And they get a score. I got 100%. Well, um, if they don't get 100%, they'll want to redo it most likely. I got 97, I got 80. Um, I've really never seen with any kind of coaching anyone get less than a 60 percent very first try and that's rare itself it's normally in the 80 to 90 percentile the very first time they play and they're succeeding they're, they know by the anticipation when to hit the notes they know by the color which one to hit it's just a hand-eye coordination game and they master it very quickly all right so i'm going to go back now and i'm actually going to take you to the finger numbers okay and I'm gonna go back to level three with the fingering numbers and this is one of the things that they teach you in this Academy to basically sing along with them the fingerings so the fingerings are basically thumb is one two three four five so one two three four five this is standard piano fingering All right. by the way did you know that Bach uh, was the first person to use the thumb playing the keyboard before then it was a considered a bad finger, the devil's finger. And he said, God gave that to me, I'm gonna use it. <laughs> so um, this is how these things are mapped out. You're gonna see a little hand, left and right hand on each one, and they're gonna have a number in it. This one has, you probably can't see on the screen, but a three and a two. Written on there is a little hand. The right hand has the thumb here. The left hand down here has the thumb here, right? So I've got right hand up here, left hand. Now, um, can we zoom in here to just to, to see that? And you can maybe you can see there's a little three there in there. Okay. So the kids see that three and that three is the, the third. Let me zoom back out here. Now that you've seen that. The three is actually the, the fingering is goes like this. One is the thumb, two, three, four, five. So the, the, the hands are, of course, uh, a mirror image of each other. So the, the three on the right is the third finger of my right hand, second finger of my right hand. So three, two, and then two for this one, and then three on the next black one. So three, two, two, three, three, two, two, three. And they, we have the kids sing along. All right, now watch. So I'm just going to play along here, and I'm just going to sing the, the number names. So the third finger of my left, my right hand, and then the opposite, the second and the third here. So three, two, three, three, two, two, three, three, two. And they learn the fingerings and they sing along, right? And as they master those fingerings, that's the transition device we have. So when we take away the color coding and they still have the fingerings, they're able to transition to the black notes here. Three, two, two, three, three. 
And I'm also pointing out to them, you know, this note's high, it's more to the right. So, high, low, high, low, high, low, high, high, low, so that they can get another perspective and they master this song. Uh, yay. Now, by the way, that applause is unconditional. You get 2%, you get applause. I know we all wish we had more of that in life, uh, unconditional applause. But I'm going to go back here and show you that I, how, now I've conditioned them. Okay, here's the fingering numbers. I've transitioned them to the black notes without the color coding. And then I take that off and go back to just color. Or maybe I learn the names of the notes. I'm not going to do that right now. And I go back into that same song on level four. And there, level four. And I'm talking about high and low. And they might get a little nervous here because they don't have the cues of the color coding. But if you've conditioned them beforehand on the high and low, so right hand, here it comes, high and low. High and low. High and low. I'm doing it opposite. High and low, high, high and low. High and low. And at this point, you're thinking, okay, great. You, they memorized this song, basically. And they're recognizing something they've already memorized. Yes, but watch. One fun thing to do, just to, for your own sake, and don't, don't try it on the kids, because it can be discouraging if they can't quite do it. But try it on an adult who, you know, who, who, who can take it. I'm going to go in, and I'm going to go to the next song, The Eagle. This is another two-note song with the same two notes, completely different melody. And I start people on level four on the second song, just that high-low concept, and they're able to play usually in the 80 percentile on level four without ever having seen this song before. And let me just show you. It's a, it's a different song. It's the same notes. It starts actually on the left hand. Um, but it, again, that high-low concept. But this little microcosm of these, these two keys on the, on the right, you see this here? Completely different song now, right? But it's the same two notes. Low, high, low, low, high, low, high, low. And I can, I'm, I'm able to see very clearly which, you know, hand is which. I'm speeding it up here. You'll be stunned at how well they'll do on the fourth level of the second song after you've taken them through the first one. That shows us that the kids are actually assimilating on a subconscious level the music notation grid and, and how that relates. Again, we start with something very clear with the color coding, we rotate it, we take color coded music notation, we take no fingering numbers in there to bridge them to the black notes, and then we take the black notes away, a, a kind of a, a height relationship thing. But again, they've learned the song so well that at this time they're just recognizing how music notation represents abstractly music. Music notation and music are not the same thing, right? Any more than a book is language. A book is a representation of a certain sequence of words, but it is not spoken language, right? And we want these kids to be able to go back and forth, and that's the beauty of this.